Good morning, everybody. We're here in Quebec, in Drummondville. I've picked up my first pickup. There is another one, possibly, but this one pretty much is almost a full load as it is. It's about 40,000 pounds. I just got it on the trailer. I'll go give you a look, and then we gotta go scale it. It is those are tracks for uh john deere tractors or case tractors uh you know those big four-wheel drive tractors that uh pull the big air seeders yeah these so there's a happy farmer at the end of this trip i'm sure i love our farmers so i got it loaded up closer to the front of the trailer than the back because I want to put more freight on the back here, right? But I have to go scale it now to make sure I didn't put it too far forward because I don't want to be overweight on my truck. If that's the case, well, then I got a problem. Probably going to have to go back there. I'm guessing by the time, well, maybe this afternoon yet, I'd have to go back to the shipper and get them to move it back a little bit. And uh, they wouldn't like me very much for that, but hopefully it doesn't come to that. There's a scale about uh, 15 miles toward Montreal from here. I've already moved my fifth wheel up as far as I can. So that, that puts more weight from these tires onto my drive tires. Uh, sorry, my off of my drive tires onto my steer tires up there. So that I'm maximizing the maximum amount of weight I can have on my truck. I can have 12, approximately 12,000 pounds on the front and about 37,500 pounds on my drives back here because this load is staying in Canada. So let's go. Let's go scale and see how fat we are. I hope I didn't load it too far forward. Uh, a little bit worried about that, but you know, you know what'd be really nice? It'd be nice if it was some kind of mandated law that every shipper shipping out loads that are over 30,000 pounds have to have a scale on site for the drivers to scale before they leave the yard so that they don't have to come back. That would be nice. Not, not, that doesn't happen very often. It does happen sometimes. It's very nice when it does. But now I gotta go to the nearest scale. Scale, if it's not loaded properly, I have to go back to the shipper, undo all my straps, get them to move it back, and then go scale it again. And that could be a whole day affair, just trying to get the weight right, right? But if they had a scale right on site there, bada bing, bada boom, you get the freight on there, scale it right away, you're out of there. It saves you a whole day of running back and forth usually. But scales are very expensive. And I don't know how we would manage to uh, convince people that this is something that they have to have, like mandated by law. If you're, loads, if you're loading trucks over 30, 000, with over 30,000 pounds of freight, must have a scale on site. I don't know, what do you guys think about that? Let me know down below. According to my gauges, I was pretty heavy on my drives here, but I had my fifth wheel all the way back. All the way back. So I moved it forward quite a bit, as far as I can, but still leaving enough space for my trailer to move over there, right? So we got it locked in place where it is now. I just gotta roll up this landing gear all the way yet before I leave and then we'll be ready to go. It looks like I should be okay. I'm pretty confident, like 99% sure that I'll be just fine. But I'm gonna go scale it anyways, just in case. I hear that that new scale by Shania, Ontario, uh, we delivered those barriers there not too long ago. That's a hardcore scale, like high tech scale. Uh, no messing around there. I hear that that's open now, it's a new one. So I wanna be prepared for when I go past there uh, tomorrow or the day after. I don't want to be overweight, because they'll know. So the nearest cat scale from here is actually 32 kilometers from here. 
that would be oh, about 18 miles, yeah. Something like that. It's in Saint Lavoir, Quebec. At the big stop. because uh, the government does. So I'm allowed 17,000 kilograms on my drives, on my truck, and 17,000 on my tandem trailer. So we're gonna go weigh in kilograms so that we're accurate for Canadian, Canadian speak, because we're staying in Canada. Every Canadian that I know of uses pounds. Like when I talk about weight, I always speak in pounds, but if you're talking government or official business like this, like maximum weight for highways, it's in kilograms. It's so confusing, we use both. We used to do the same measurements as the US, but uh, our current uh, leader of our country right now, his father was the leader at one time back in the 60s and he decided it'd be a good idea to change it all up. So here we are. Was it a good idea? I don't know. I'm just used to it. This is all I know. So it uh, makes it a little more confusing. I wish we would have just stayed with the other measurements so that we were in line with the US. And it's so confusing because freight going back and forth, the measurements are always mixed up. 600 meters, take the entrance to the ride on or 20 West. Auto route, if we're delivering to the US from Canada, all of the measurements are in metric and kilograms, and then you go to the US and they're confused. They don't understand. And then when you go to the US and you pick up freight and it's coming to Canada, everything is in pounds and inches and feet. So since, I guess since we're the smaller nation, we're the little brother, we sort of just learn both as we grow up. So we know metric and imperial, or American as I say it because America is really the only country that, major country that uses uses those measurements, right? So I always just call it American measurements. But I don't know, it's, I, this is all I know. So this is normal to me. Just gotta do lots of conversions all the time. trailer than we had coming out this way. <laughs> I only had 15,000 pounds coming this way. I'm already at 40,000 pounds on the trailer this way, going back. You can definitely feel there's a difference, definitely. Let's get back on the auto route, auto route 20. Easy. Got a lot more weight, we gotta be a little bit more careful. hills. I like doing that when I'm heavy, so I, a little easier on Old Blue. Glad I got all my brakes checked and adjusted before I left on this trip. I'm good to go.
Irving is a huge, uh, huge company out here in the east, especially in the Maritimes when you go further east from Quebec. They have really nice truck stops. If you see one, make sure you pull in and go you have and arrived check it out. At your destination on the right side, Irving St. Lebois Big Stop. I'm gonna have to wait for him to get out of the driveway. There we go. Yeah, these are amazing truck stops. They really prioritize the truck driver. Make us feel special. They do a great job. I wish they had more of them out west as well. Anyone in the Irving family happens to be watching my videos? Not likely, but if they are, if you know them, tell them to expand out west. We could use some of these nice Irvings out in Manitoba, Saskatchewan, Alberta. You're flying J.A. Run for its money out there, eh? It'd be nice to have a good Canadian company like this to compete with them. Enter. Man, I need to wash this truck. I'm a little bit nervous. I think I got a call in from here first, right? Hello, it's first way. LB or kilograms? Kilograms, yep. Okay. You can go forward. You should always shut your truck off when you're talking to them on the speaker there so that they can hear you better. It's very hard to hear what the driver's saying when the engine's running. Thank you. Now right in front of us here, there's a no parking sign painted onto the pavement, so they don't want us parking in front of the scales. That makes sense. I'm gonna go and uh, park over there where that truck is in front of me there, that Freightliner. I'm gonna turn around and back in one of those spots beside him there. There's the Quebec flag. One thing you'll notice in uh, Quebec when you if you ever come here, you won't see many Canada flags flying, but you'll see a lot of Quebec flags. I'm very happy, I'm a very happy trucker. I nailed it. Check this out. Steer tires, 5470. Drive tires, 15990. That means I have a thousand kgs available for fuel yet. And I do need a little bit of fuel. Nice. And 11,780 on the trailer, which means I have plenty of space for more freight back there, weight wise. I have 15 feet of physical space available. And what is that? 55, 52, 12, 30, 40, 40, 40, about 5,000 kgs worth. So about 11, 10 to 11,000 pounds worth of available weight space on the tail end on the trailer. So I'm going to park it right here. I called into the load gods back home. I gave them the situation. I said, I can take anything under 11,000 pounds and under 15 feet. And they went to work. So they're, they're looking and scrambling, trying to find me something else that's uh, coming out of Quebec or Ontario here that I can take back home with me. I get paid by the load. I don't get paid by the mile. Uh, I get paid by the load uh, percentage. 
So majority of the rate goes to me because I have majority of the, the costs. Uh, they take a cost, they, they take a fraction of the cost as, as well because uh, they have overhead back there. They have office and staff to pay. The load gods need to eat too. They need the money too. So they take a cut off of it and the majority of it does come to me. But uh, I get paid percentage or by the load. So the more we put on here, the more I get paid. So as long as we're under legal limit, load me up. I'm not sure exactly how long I'm gonna wait here. The rest of the day for sure. Uh, what is it now? It's already two o'clock here, Eastern time. <laughs> we're gonna have to find something quick. If we wanna get loaded today, I might end up just staying right here at Irving tonight and loading something around here tomorrow morning, then headed home. What is today? I'm filming this on a when, no, Tuesday. 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 Filming this on a Tuesday. So if we leave tomorrow morning, I have all day and night Wednesday, all day and night Thursday. We can deliver all of this Friday and then go home for the weekend. That's the plan. I'm happy about this. This is turning out well. Better than the last time I was out here where everything canceled on me. So even if I just have this freight going back, that's okay. It's an all right load. It's decent pay, but why settle for decent pay when you can have excellent pay? So I'm going to wait around just for, for a little while here, see what they come up with, see if we can get something else thrown on the trailer. I have the space. It's just wasted if I don't put anything on it. And when I say load gods, I have to explain this just because I've, I've had this question come up before. What do you mean load gods? You shouldn't call them that. I mean the fleet managers, dispatchers back in the office. Uh, what they do is they, they go and they find the freight for me. They book it. They do all of that, the work that I don't want to do. All of the headaches of talking to these people. No, I shouldn't say these people. Talking to the people <laughs> on the phone. I don't like talking on the phone. So they do all the phone calling. They do all the booking. They do all the arranging. They do all the negotiations for the rate. And then they come back to me and they say, okay, this is what I came up with. What do you think? And then I can say yay or nay. I very rarely say nay. I mean, I want to respect their uh, their time. I don't want them to go through all this time negotiating and working out a load for me. And then just for me to be like, no, I don't want to do that. That's boring. I don't want to do that. That's kind of rude. I mean, they went through all that work to find me freight. And they are trying to get top dollar, right? Because the more money I make, the more money they make. So it's in their best interest to shoot higher with the rates, as high as they can. That's why they negotiate, right? Sometimes they got to bid on different loads. They do all of this bidding and take care of all of that because if I had to do that all myself, oh, I, I seriously wouldn't have a life. Right now I do trucking plus YouTube, which is, uh, plus I have a family at home too. Let's not forget that. But between just my work life, let's talk about just my work life right now. My life is packed full, packed right full. I try to get everything done before I go home so that when I go home, that is family time. Sometimes I have to use some of my family time to catch up with my work on online. I try to do that during nap time uh, when my son is napping, but you know, it's or sometimes my truck needs some work done to it. It's, it. it's always something, it's always something. But my life is packed full right now. Very, very, very busy. I like it that way, I like keeping myself busy. I like uh, idle hands get into trouble, you know? Not that I'd get into trouble, but I like to keep myself busy and occupied. So uh, adding on all of the headaches and stress of finding loads and negotiating for them and then yeah, this chasing after people for money. Like, I don't know how that all works. Every month, uh, my checks come in. I don't have to worry about uh, where it's all coming from, right? They take it all together and then they, they do all that work for me, which is, I'm so thankful for that. They do a really good job. There's a great team back home that takes care of all this for me. And I just, I always like to give them special acknowledgement because a lot of times on the road between truckers here, we sort of forget all the work that they do. You guys back in the office there, you guys and gals, thank you very much for working so hard for me. I'm trying my best out here to work just as hard for you on my end. So now that my weight is all figured out, found out that I'm not overweight. That makes me feel very good and very self-confident that I can get out there in public and not feel fat. Or not too fat anyways. A little chubby. <laughs> I'm pretty much up to my max. I'm too heavy to go into the US, that's for sure. But in Canada here, I'm fine. I, I still got some space. So, like always, I always appreciate reading all of your comments. Leave me a comment down below. 
in the comments section. Helps me out with the algorithms. If you hit the like button as well, hit that subscribe button. Those are the three best ways you can support me. They're very easily. If you wanna to go to the next step, down below this video and on my main page, there's a join now button where you can join our channel as a member and get special access to, uh, well, early access to the videos and members only content as well. Uh, it's like for the price of a, a coffee. It's not much, you can cancel at any time, but that's if you wanna go to that next step, if you, if you, if you really wanna support the channel. If not, the best thing you can do to support me is just a thumbs up, a couple of clicks of your mouse or a couple of clicks on your screen. I guess we don't really watch YouTube on computers anymore. I just sounded really old there, didn't I? Just go and click with your mouse there on the subscribe button. You're on your phone, aren't you? You're on your phone. Go down below, scroll down below, turn your phone vertical. It'll make my video go small at the top. Uh, if you want to know more about me, you can click the title beneath the video. It'll, it'll do give you a drop down box of all of the information of who I am, what I am, a little bit of history of my channel, links to all of my social media. Please again be aware that there's people posing as me in comment sections, they steal my profile picture and they try to get you to go to Telegram or WhatsApp. I don't have those social media, I don't have a Telegram. Don't leave this site, you're already here on my site. I want you to stay right here. I want you to stay right here on this site. I'm not gonna tell you to go, hey, let's go hang out somewhere else. No, I already got you here, I wanna keep you here. They're gonna try to scam you out of some money or something, uh, so that's not me. If you wanna know if it's me, there's a little check mark beside my name on all my social media. And uh, if you wanna know if it's me that's replying to you, because they reply to the comments down below, right? You've probably seen them. It's harmless. They're harmless as long as you just don't engage with them and don't give them anything. It's harmless comments. If you see what looks like me to be commenting to you, first of all, go check the username above the comment. Does it have that little check mark? And if you're still unsure, click on the username. See if it brings you to my YouTube channel where all of my playlists and videos are. If it doesn't, if it brings you somewhere else, that's not me. That's someone trying to scam you out of something. YouTube and myself, we're doing everything we can to prevent that. But the internet's the wild west. Sometimes they still get through. Just be aware of that. Don't fall for it. Don't engage with them. Report the comment. And uh, and we'll just move on from there. We're trying. It's very annoying, I know. But as long as we're aware of it, then uh, we won't have anybody get scammed. I've, I've had people in the past that uh, have gotten scammed by them, unfortunately. Like viewers of mine, then they email me later. Recently, I just received another email saying, I, uh, sorry, Josh, I can't talk to you on Telegram. I don't have a Telegram. I'm looking at my email and, oh, uh, I sent him back a message right away. I said, don't, don't go to Telegram. I don't have a Telegram. Don't engage with him. That's a scammer posing as me. He's gonna, you know, talk with you for a while, convince you that he's me, and then he's gonna ask you for something. And that's not me. You're already on my channel. And uh, I appreciate the fact that you're here and that you've watched all the way to the end. That is awesome. I'll see you tomorrow. We're gonna have a lot more road footage and driving footage tomorrow as we gotta start making our way back west. Got to get probably about 600 miles at least done tomorrow. It'll be a long day. I'll see you then. Take care, everybody, and drive safe. Be internet safe.